Hi, I'm Scott Willison, owner of the Confluence Fly Shop in Bellingham, Washington. And today we're going to tie one of my favorite summer smallmouth patterns. Uh, this is the Crazy Dad. It's a Shane stall cup pattern um, that I've been using for years. I like it because it's fairly simple to tie. Um, you lose some of these things fishing down along the bottom and the rocks where the crayfish live. So, uh, this is kind of my variation on it that I've been fishing the last couple of summers for smallmouth on Lake Whatcom and uh, definitely worth tying up a few of these. So in my vise I have a size 6 uh, Tiemco 200R. Uh, you could also use a Daiichi 1270, very similar hook. Uh, I'm going to use a rusty brown 6 aught Ultra Thread and we'll go ahead and get that started up toward the eye of the hook. And then I have a pair of small size, just plain lead eyes. This is what's going to get this fly down and fishing near the bottom. Get that back just a little bit to give myself room for a head and we are just going to figure eight wrap that in. I always like to do a few spiral wraps around the base of the eyes just to really firmly seat those. And then we'll give them a test and make sure they don't spin on us. And then I think we're good to go. You could of course throw a little bit of super glue in there if you want uh, a little extra holding power. I'm going to wrap down the, the bend of the hook just a little bit um, where I'm going to put in my, my legs here. Um, and I like wrapping down the bend so that these kind of stick up and emulate claws or antenna. Uh, this is going to give the fly a lot of movement. Um, so I have some crazy legs in a uh, root beer with the orange tips that we're going to use for the legs and I'm going to take four legs and just rip them off the skirt here so I've got a skirt of four legs and then I am going to cut that in the middle and then double it over so you can see just like magic I've got eight legs here now and we're gonna go ahead and tie these in I want to kind of gauge it uh, legs are going to be about the length of the shank of the hook and I want to make sure I get some of that orange tip in there as well so wrap those in there firmly. I'm not too worried about the bulk of this tie-in point because I'm going to cover that all up with the body. We'll go ahead and trim off our extras there and then I'm going to cut that so I've got a little bit of that orange tip in there but not too much. Uh, we'll now go ahead and form a dubbing loop Gonna wrap around the base of the loop a couple of times, and then we'll go ahead and take our thread up to those eyes. Got my favorite uh, stone faux dubbing spinner here that we'll use. We'll put that in the loop, and then for the body, we are gonna use uh, Cohen's Carp Dub in a color called Crusty Nail. This is kind of orange with some black rubber legs in it makes a great material for the body and you see I've got a pretty good clump of it here I'm gonna kinda just spread that out so we can get it in the dubbing loop 
I want a little bit more dubbing up toward the top of the loop there. This is going to form the back of our body. And it's going to be a little bulkier back there. So now that we've got that in there, we'll go ahead and twist it up. Make sure we don't get our rubber legs caught up in there. And then I've got a little brush here. We're just going to kind of brush that out a little bit. I want a really scraggly body on this. And then we'll go ahead and get that body wrapped here. And wrap all the way up to the eyes. And it's looking like I playing just about right. Ideally. I want my last wrap behind the eyes to just be bare thread. And I think we're going to come pretty close to getting that here. Not quite, but good enough. We'll take a couple wraps over the loop to lock that down. A couple wraps in front and then a couple more wraps over it to make sure that's really secure. Now we can go ahead and snip our thread. that out of the way. We'll do a little half hitch here just to kind of lock things down and then go ahead and you could use a bodkin for this. I'm, I'm very fond of using the, the little pointed portion of my whip finisher and I'm going to kind of pick this out so I get a nice brushy buggy body. This carp dub is pretty cool stuff. Uh, besides the rubber legs, it's got some some longer Antron fibers in it. Looks great in the water, and this is ultimately going to simulate, you know, both the body and the the legs on this fly. And then now that we've got that picked out, we can just comb up that that body there. And then lastly, we're going to do our carapace. We'll turn our, our hook upside down in the vise. And for our carapace, we are going to use um, an orange bucktail. And I'm not going to use this bright orange stuff here on the back of the bucktail. I'm actually going to use kind of the more muted orange here. This would have been the brown part of the bucktail that took on a little bit of the orange dye and uh, I think it just has a great sort of mottled natural look. I like that better than the bright bright orange which doesn't really look much like a a crayfish shellback. So we'll take our our material, you can see I've got just a small amount and I'm just going to comb that fluff out of the butt ends there. And then I want that extending out just slightly beyond the, the hook point there. Not as long as my rubber legs. I'm going to take a couple of wraps to secure that down behind the eyes and then we're going to lift those ends up. We'll take our thread on the underside of the eyes to the eye of the hook. Make sure we don't pull our carapace out there. And then I'm going to bind that down and front of the eyes as well. Make sure all of our material is on top. Take 
make a couple wraps under it and then we can go ahead and whip finish here you see all sorts of crayfish patterns out there with super realistic claws and eyes and the works and they look great but uh, those take a while to tie and uh, you you are going to lose some of these on the bottom so this is a nice just kind of smaller impressionistic pattern um, I find our smallmouth up here kind of favor the smaller crayfish that uh, aren't so menacing. I'm going to go ahead and cut that bucktail a little long there and that's going to give the impression of a, a tail on the crayfish. Um, and then at this point I can go ahead and finish her up. Just going to apply a little bit of Solares bone dry to my thread wraps all around get that covered and then we'll cure that up set so there you have it a very buggy little impressionistic uh, stall cups crazy dad um, tied with Cohen's carp dub so take take one out on your favorite smallmouth waters these will work pretty well for trout as well uh, anyway tie up a few as always you can find the materials for this and many other flies at the confluence fly shop in Bellingham Washington Thanks for watching and please be sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.